My name is Jeff H. Seip, and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In this video, we are going to discuss the commonly asked interview question, tell me about a time you had a disagreement with your boss slash leadership. Why are we covering this question? I spent a lot of time researching this question, and I realized the more and more I got into it, the depth of this question and how challenging it can be. So please stick with me. I'm going to provide a sample answer at the end. And lastly, if you don't have an example for this question, either you're not being 100% truthful or you haven't raised your voice enough. And that's a really critical function of being a great employee. So remember, disagreements are good. And if you look at them positively, you will have a positive impact on the organization. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. So item one, positivity. I always want you to be thinking about positivity when answering this question. And it starts with restating the question. So instead of talking about a disagreement, say, hey, Sue, great question. You want me to tell you about a time where I had the opportunity to share my perspective with my boss. So Instantly, you are starting on that positive tone. You're flipping from disagree to negative word to opportunity, a positive word. And so it's just really critical that you change around the wording a little bit. I also want you to talk about how you approach these situations in a really calm and respectful manner. That will be positive. And then the last positive piece is, if you can, I want you to highlight your lead or boss's skills and strengths. Talking about them and their skills in a positive manner can be really helpful too. Item two, communication and EQ. So I kind of wanted to couple this communication and emotional intelligence piece together because they are kind of coupled together. So one, active listening. You have to hear what your boss or lead is saying. You have to ask inquisitive follow-up questions. Third, you have to have a little bit of courage, but courage while being respectful. And then I think a really other important one is conflict resolution skills, understanding how to have the ebbs and flows and the good back and forth. And lastly, and this is more on the emotional intelligence side, empathy. Remember, your boss this directive might have come from up above them, and they might not agree with it, but they might be playing the high road and saying, hey, this is the direction, this is the activity we need to take. And that's a great segue into item three, data and goals. So by utilizing active listening and asking great questions, you're going to start to find out the data. You're going to start to find out the goals. And from there, you're really going to be able to solve and overcome this disagreement with your boss. So in the beginning, you're going to want to try and find out their motivations. You're going to want to find out if these goals are actually coming from them or they're a directive from overall leadership. And then you are going to make sure that you have the overall data, facts, and information. And part of that data, facts, and information is really understanding the historical context, um, understanding your own organization, understanding the industry, understanding the competitive landscape, etc. There's a lot that goes into the historical context and data component. Item four, voice and company needs. So it's, it's important to balance having this voice, but also understanding that ultimately you have to go with the needs of your company. So with your voice, it's really critical that you're providing your perspective, that you're being proactive, that you're being solution-based, and that you're providing alternatives and options in a really positive way. And coupled with having this voice is understanding that it's always important to support the company and support their initiatives. And ultimately, if the company, your boss, decides to not take your direction, to be positive about the fact that they ultimately needed to do what they felt was best for the organization. Item number five, your role. I like to call this a maybe item. It just may be important for the interviewer to understand a little bit more about the context of you and your role. This is really up to you, but you might want to just talk a little bit more about those expectations in the position. It might be important context for them, etc. 
Now, that's a great segue into more interview-specific items, specifically two items. Item six is the who. So one of the items that I didn't really find during my research was talking about who's going to be asking you this question. And it's likely only a few different people. It's either going to be your direct hiring manager, that's the most likely, a skip lead, that's also likely, and potentially somebody in HR. And so when you understand where this question is coming from, it will just help you understand how important it is that you make sure you give a great answer, especially if it's your potential hiring manager or potential skip lead. The second interview specific one, item seven, is learnings. Obviously, I want you to use the Starlf method, of course, but just an emphasis on learnings. Remember, when you have disagreements with any relationship, your boss, a stakeholder, an external customer, it's really important that you talk about what you learn from those interactions. So, item eight, let's dive in, let's do the example. So, Jeff, I want you to tell me about a time you disagreed with your boss, Sue, Great question. So you'd like to tell me about a time I had an opportunity to share a differing perspective with my boss. The situation occurred late in 2017 when I was a program manager focused in supply chain at Google. We had been working with a difficult vendor that supplied CPU components for our Nest devices, and my boss, Jane, who is a director of program management, asked me to step in and renegotiate our contract for 2018, specifically asking this difficult client for a 10% reduction across the board in cost. This was about $2 million, and she wanted this $2 million reduction to come over a 12-month period of time. This did occur during a weekly stakeholder meeting, so I really kind of took it in, listened, asked some follow-up questions at the time, but I didn't really disagree with Jane in that forum because it wasn't appropriate, but my task was clear. I needed to renegotiate with this vendor. The first action I needed to take was to schedule a follow-up meeting with Jane. Um, I had always experienced Jane to be really open to my ideas, and she was an expert in vendor management. So I knew that if I went to her and told her my main objective was understanding the reasoning behind this decision, that she would be really open. And so I created a list of questions, specifically asking for the reasoning, where the directive was coming from, and understanding if she was open to alternatives. And at the end of the meeting, I asked Jane for three days. That was my ask. I said, give me three days to come up with an action plan for you. And while Jane was friendly, she was pretty stern that this was the direction the company was going to take. But I stood there calmly and politely and really asked for three days. And she granted me the three days. So the second action was I needed to get to work. And that started with data gathering. So I mentioned that this was a difficult client, just a little bit of additional context. The interactions had been pretty poor and they had missed three critical shipments during 2017. So with those two items coupled, I went, I found Bob. He was the former stakeholder and program manager dealing with this vendor for three years. And he had confirmed that they were also difficult to work with and had missed shipments. He didn't know how many. Secondly, I went to our customer success team to just ask if I could get some documentation. And within that documentation, I was able to find some other negative interactions with this specific vendor. Third, I researched competitors and identified three specific CPU competitors that might come in and be able to offer us alternatives. Fourth, I wanted to stack rank. So part of that research and stack ranking was reaching out to former colleagues and friends at some of Google's competitors to figure out, hey, is this the best move? What has your experience been like with this company, et cetera? And that allowed me to stack rank those companies and then lastly, I actually had to reach out to these companies, make sure I could get those meetings quickly. And I brought SMEs into those meetings. And specifically, I brought a person from sales, I brought a technical person, and I brought that customer success person that I had talked to before because their interactions were going to be critical. Action three, I needed to compile all the data into two formats, a Google spreadsheet and then a Google Slides presentation. And ultimately what I wanted to identify for Jane was the customer focus of these three organizations, their price point, and a perceived ability to ship and deliver on time. Action four, I had that second meeting with Jane 
and in the meeting I presented my findings, I made recommendations, and I also highlighted the benefits and the challenges of switching vendors, especially as we were heading into 2018, because there were going to be a lot of challenges. And then I presented, lastly, an anticipated timeline for how we could make the change. And my final recommendation was that I could either present this to leadership or that Jane could roll it up to leadership herself. Ultimately, the results were Jane and the executive team agreed with my number one choice of AMD, and we moved forward with them as a vendor. The cost reduction of using AMD was not 10%. It was 5%. AMD's price point came in a little higher, but since we were a new organization with a high spend, they gave us a 5% discount, ultimately still saving us a million dollars a year. Um, in addition, we had no delays with them in the time that I was in this role. All deliveries were on time or ahead of schedule. The kudos I received was a promotion, and this was definitely a big part of it. It was definitely something that was highlighted at the top of my promotion packet. And lastly was the documentation piece. The way I conducted the research with the vendor, I documented. And this was actually shared with our marketing team. And our marketing team took this approach and switched a vendor, and that saved them 300000 also in 2018. So it was a huge win for the organization replacing two vendors. And what I learned from this example was the importance of listening and asking questions before challenging leadership. And that research and data are obviously critical to success when you have a disagreement or an opportunity to share your perspective with your boss. So I can provide you with a little bit more about the research I provided for Jane. I can also tell you a little bit more about my interactions with Jane, or I can tell you a little bit more about the rollout with AMD. That's it. I know this feels like a lot. It's a lot of information. It's a more complex question than at face value. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks.